Okay, we're back again uh, with the rest of our scars of mirrored and common re commons reviews. Um, okay, Flameborn Hellion. Uh, this is actually kind of an interesting card. Uh, it's got a decent, you know, mana cost for what it does. Six isn't terrible for a five-four with haste. Um, and then I guess they needed a drawback with this um, Flameborn uh, Hellion attacks each turn of able. Um, this is actually pretty nice. It's got a decent power. It's, it's toughness is makes it kind of blast proof for the most part. Um, not too bad. It may be some sort of, in some sort of ramp deck or something like that, but definitely have seen worse large creatures. Um, Golem Foundry, uh, whenever an artifact comes into play, Put a charge counter on Golem Foundry. When it, remove three charge counters from Golem Foundry. Uh, put a 3-3 three, three colorless Golem artifact creature token into the battlefield. This is a card that really screams to have a deck, you know, built around it. Where you're essentially trying to get, you know, rack up those counters, either by playing artifacts or through, through some of the other means, like Proliferate or something like that. Um, which isn't really available that, that well in common. There's only one card that proliferates so far, but, uh, um, something that gets a lot of counters on this thing fast and then spits out tons and tons of golems. Seems like an interesting card. Uh, I mean, obviously putting out 3-3 three, three golems as quickly as possible is pretty powerful. I mean, you're probably going to overwhelm your opponent pretty fast with that. So Definitely something to take, keep an eye on. Um, Tumble Magnet, uh, pretty good card. It's uh, fairly cheap. It's basically like a... It reminds me of Icy Manipulator a little bit because it, cause it, uh, it's kind of a cross between Icy Manipulator and Serrated Arrows, I guess, because it basically taps, uh, you know, artifacts or creatures. I think Icy Manipulator may have tap lands as well, but I can't remember. But anyways, if it, lands or not, it's pretty pretty darn good because it just does it for free and then it removes a charge counter from this as pay part of its payment. So you're not paying mana to tap stuff. Uh, seems pretty good. Seems pretty abusable with stuff that can bounce uh, permanents back to your hand. Um, or even re recur re artifacts from the graveyard if you somehow like destroy it. Um, Golden Urn. Um, overall, not that great. I mean, but if, if if you get these things out pretty fast, I mean, they build, they'll, they'll build up charge counters and net you a decent amount of life, but I mean... It really depends on what kind of deck you're building. Maybe if you're playing something that's defensive that uses maybe a lot of walls or a lot of def really defensible creatures or tons of removal, maybe it'd be good there. But it's really not going to be good in anything that's anything other than a really slow deck that can survive. Um, Necrogen Sensor. Um, it's, it's it's an okay card. It's kind of interesting. I, I wish this actually came into play with three charge counters on it. I, really don't see how it's why you want to pay three for two char two charge counters and when you remove one your target player loses two life. I mean it's not bad it gets around you know circles of protection and stuff like that but um, it's just kind of meh overall. I mean it's usually you're going to want just want a creature attacking every turn and defending you and you know <laughs> if you're not attacking and this thing doesn't really do that, and it only gets two uses, so it's just kind of, eh. Uh, Stoic Rebuttal is actually pretty good. Uh, Metalcraft is, I think this is like the winner ability of the set. This is actually a really, uh, Metalcraft is a really nice ability usually. Um, it's basically a counter spell if you have three or more artifacts, and that's, that's pretty, pretty solid. doesn't get much better than that. Um... Lumen Grid Drake, um, basically just a flying man of war. If you uh, if, if you control three or more artifacts, not bounce isn't terribly hot and popper because there's so many creatures with come into play come into play abilities that it just kind of you know. Then for four, it's just you know meh. <laughs> um, Veldelkin Surtarch. Um, this thing's pretty good. Uh, for one blue, you meet the metal craft requirement. You can tap target artifact, creature, or land. Um, that's not too bad. 
I mean, if you get a lot of artifacts out fast, I mean, you can, and maybe this guy and maybe some, some other type of tapper out, you can really probably lock down your opponent pretty quick. Um, screeching Silclaw, or Silcaw, um, flying and metal craft ability. Um, whenever Screeching Silcaw deals combat damage to a player, if you control three more artifacts, that player puts the top four cards of his or her, his or her library into his or her graveyard. Um, I don't know how great this is. I've been really following any of the popper. Um, uh, you know, uh, you know, cards into your graveyard. You know, decking. Uh, um, you know, uh, decks. You know, so I mean, this could be could be decent, could be could be not. Looks not that great to me overall. Um, Chrome Steed, decent. You get a four four for four. I mean, it's vanilla, but it still it's just a four four for four. If you get something, they ramp out mana pretty fast. It's not too bad. It's not too great, as you'll see, because there's another creature in here that's a little bit better than him. Um, Snap Sail Glider, meh. Um, although the nice part about the artifact. Metal craft creatures as they pay essentially pay for their own metal craft partly, so um, not too bad in that at respect. Um, Galma's Warden. This is actually a pretty good creature, um, and it's not real. And the nice part about it, it seems like a lot of these metal craft things is they're not too color specific, save for Stoic Rebuttal, of course. Um, 2-4 that gets an, ex an additional 2-2 two, two, as long as you meet the metal craft. That's pretty darn good. I mean, you're, you're end ending up with a 4-6, which is pretty good. Um, Aurex Sun Chaser, you get a 3-3 three, three flyer if you meet metal craft for 2. That's pretty good. Pretty darn good. Um, Carapace Forger. This is okay. This is a guy that basically makes Chrome Steed look, look like why bother. Um, Basically, get it for two. You get a four four if you meet metal craft. So, and he comes out two turns earlier. If you, even if you don't have him, you can start keep start swinging with him. So it's not bad. Um, bl uh, Blade Tribe Berserkers. Um, this is essentially a six six for, for if you meet the metal craft. So I mean that's that's pretty good for four. Um. Galvanic Blast uh, deals two, so it's a shock normally, and then it basically deals four damage if you meet Metalcraft. Um, that's pretty darn good. I mean, you can't, you can't really beat beat that kind of removal for the most part. I mean, that's pretty pretty good. Uh, Bleak Coven Vampires uh, three four, you know, threes in bla blasting range, but you know, I meet the Metalcraft, and it 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 it. Uh, Target player loses four life, and you gain four life. So that's not too bad. I mean, you're going to be taking a chunk out of them anyways, and uh, and that's not terrible for five. I know there's there's been spells in the past that do stuff like that, and they're not they're not horrible. But the the, the thing that makes this great is you actually get the the body, you know, the creature body in addition to the spell. So that's pretty good. Um, Azuri's Archers. Um, I like the I like the one two for one. That's pretty good. It's got reach, which is pretty good. Um, whenever Azuri's archers blocks a creature with flying, it gets plus three plus L. So basically, it becomes a four two for one. Uh, that's pretty darn good. Maybe in some sort of elf deck that needs uh, flight protection, something like that. Uh, not too bad. Uh, Capricorn Scout. Whenever Caphorn Scout attacks, untap each other creature you control. So that's not bad. You go on the you go on the offense. This thing attacks, and uh, you're basically defending after you've gone on the offense. Not too bad, overall. Um, works pretty good with tap creatures, obviously. <laughs> you know, creatures that tap for mana, stuff like that. They'll probably be pretty good in an elf deck. Get extra use out of your elves. Um, Glintock um, would probably be pretty good in some sort of metal craft or 
you know, affinity, uh, uh, you know, super aggro affinity or something like that. Maybe not, not maybe not your run of the mill affinity, but something a little bit different. Um, pretty good ability. Um, if an artifact has like charge counters and it like serrated, or yeah, like serrated arrows or, or tumble magnet, this is pretty abusable with that. Um, if using artifact lands, it's pretty abusable with that. So not too bad getting a two-two flyer for one. That's pretty darn good. So uh, blister grub, uh, pretty terrible I think overall. Just a generic two-two with swamp walk, and when it's put into a graveyard, each opponent loses two life. Maybe good in multiplayer, maybe, but uh, overall fairly unimpressive. And I'll continue this in another yet another video. So, be right back.